And money is just a tool that can be exchanged for things that bring you value in life. What's valuable to me may not be valuable to you. So this is a topic I've been thinking about recently and I decided I might as well go ahead and post a video on it. So this video is about why I stopped fire at the end of 2019 and the reasons why I ended up slowing the process and not indulging myself in the community as much. So first, what is FIRE? So FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. Now there's different types of FIRE, such as lean and fat FIRE, and this is an oversimplification of FIRE as a whole, but in essence what you're doing is you're maximizing your saving and retirement rate, and in some cases increasing your income as well and putting more money to your savings rate in order to be financially independent, ideally before the average age, which is the 60s, here in the US at least, because Americans just love working all the time. I'll make the story quick of how I got into fire, things I discovered on my journey, and ultimately why I ended up putting the brakes on fire, or at least just saving a bit less. So in 2016, I got my first credit card, and despite a lot of negative feedback from my family of getting one, I realized myself that I didn't see the value of using a debit card or cash because it just wasn't the best way of utilizing money. And my maximum limit was only like $500 at the time. And it was my everyday card and I never cared a balance. Then I discovered a guy of the name Dave Ramsey, who pretty much told me how much of an idiot I was for getting a credit card. But I do want to say that I think Dave Ramsey is a great resource if you are in debt and you are motivated of getting out of debt. Once you're out of debt and you have an emergency fund, that's pretty much where me and Dave Ramsey differ on pretty much everything else so instead of doing my college homework assignments oh my god my mom's gonna watch this anyway instead of doing my homework assignments in college i discovered a youtuber of the name graham stefan in 2017 and the video that stuck with me that got me to subscribe to him was compound interest how to turn one dollar into ten back when his humor was uh it was a bit more mature than what it is now but um, I also found out that me and Graham's philosophies on money were pretty much identical. And four years later, his advice still remains the same. Invest your money as early as you can, as consistently as you can, and as long as you can. That's the very simple truth about investing and growing your wealth. It's not some crazy sort of speculative bullshit. And the more I started watching his channel and his channel grow, I learned that I've been using credit cards in a responsible way. And, and instead, I should just save my money and throw it at the stock market, uh, mainly the S&P 500, and just be as frugal as possible. And shout out to Brian Jung, he, his videos also rubbed off on me. Uh, those business credit cards do come in clutch. Um, I do also believe my upbringing played a bit of an influence since at the age of 15, uh, my parents made me start working to buy my own stuff and just an overall frugal lifestyle. So I appreciate that for my upbringing. Um, then at the beginning of 2018, I essentially had no money to my name because I just spend money on Chipotle and video games all day. But I pretty much had like $120 to my name at the beginning of 2018. And then post-graduation, after landing my first job, um, I was investing consistently on a weekly basis. And speaking of investing to the five people who made it this far in this video, you can get two free stocks with Weeble just for signing up using my link down below. If you want a total of four free stocks, deposit $100 into your account as well. So after investing, I would spend hours on the personal finance and financial independence subreddits. Even at like a stoplight, I'd quickly read through some threads. I was just addicted to that subreddit. Uh, I definitely wasn't eating rice and beans when I got my first apartment. You need to have some good fried chicken with your rice. But after a while, I moved off of mint.com because the categorization was horrible in my opinion, but I do think it's good to track all your accounts and net worth over time. So then I eventually moved on to making my own spreadsheet and budget, and I kid you not, I tracked every single transaction for a year and a half. And over time, it would just stress me out spending even a little because I could see it delay my fire goal with all the formulas that I had. And fire in a way almost made me hate working my job despite me actually enjoying the people that I work with and the work that I do. And I would go as far to say fire changes your mindset and makes you inherently, is that the right word? Inherent, yeah, inherently judge people on how they spend their money. 
And this is a side note, I think it's a horrible mindset to have when you just inherently judge people on how they spend their money. Like you don't know their finances, you don't know what they're going through. Honestly, they probably have more money than you, so you should just let people spend money how they want to. Um, it also doesn't help when you move from like, at least in my situation, it doesn't help when you move from like an okay cost of living area to a high cost of living area. It made me realize like, wow, people have money here. Like just the way people dress up just to go shopping and like cars I dreamed of getting, people are just casually driving them to the grocery store or through the drive through McDonald's. And I'm just like, I am broker than broke. Like, I didn't even know this was possible. I didn't know this world existed. And then after a while, once you're accustomed to the area, you're like, eh, this is just normal, I guess. Anyway, I read the common finance books like Secrets of a Millionaire Mind, Think and Grow Rich, Millionaire Next Door, Rich Man in Babylon, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, all those books that are, I guess, the core foundation of any personal finance person. Um, books, I think, that are great for shifting your mindset on how you view money, not so much how to make money. And it wasn't until I went to the bookstore and I went to the business section to see like what are the hot business books at the time. Um, and I ran across the book, I Will Teach You To Be Rich, which ironically, a guy tried to get me to join his MLM that day. The people who try to get you to join an MLM are heartless. I don't think they have any moral compass. Uh, the innocent ones who don't really know what you're doing, I'll let you slide. But for those of you who consciously know what you're doing to get people to sign up in your MLM, Come on. Anyway, after telling the guy I wasn't interested because I don't like pyramids, I only like the ones in Egypt, that book not only changed my life, but the way I viewed money as well, and why I ended up started to slow the process on fire. So here is what I discovered from his book. For one, he gained a large portion of his wealth early on from the dot-com boom. I wish I was alive, but I was like a baby still. Um, so there are two lines in that book that have stuck with me, and I'm paraphrasing here. It goes something along the lines of, once you have your Excel sheet set, that's it. You don't have to live your life through your Excel sheet. So starting my personal spreadsheet at the beginning was super fun. Having to record all my transactions and tweak my budget made me learn a lot about taxes, loans, insurances, but more importantly, just being more financially literate and sound, which I think should be the goal for anyone trying to learn about money. Learn more than what you knew before yesterday, if that makes sense. I'm trying to sound like a motivational speaker here. But um, then it got to the point where my transaction sheet was over a thousand rows and it was just building up anxiety every time I opened it. And it just made me really uncomfortable because I could see my fire gold lane and I'm just like, I don't really like spending money. And I just, it just became a chore and a hassle and I was just like, I hate this Excel sheet. The second line, and once again, I'm paraphrasing, you shouldn't have to feel miserable when saving your money. And that line is like what really hit home for me. And I just felt bad saving and penny pinching everything. Like no disrespect to Honey Nut O's, but you don't taste like Cheerios. Frosted tarts, you don't taste like Pop Tarts. Anyway, the big takeaway I got from the book is that people should just know where their money is going. And I think that should be the goal for anyone who's trying to learn how to budget and save. Once you know where your money is going, it's up for you to decide whether you're comfortable with that. And if not, make the appropriate changes to get where you want to be. My advice is put money towards your 401k, your IRA, your HSA, your savings account, automate it, enjoy your life, but stick to your budget. It's as simple as that. You don't need to overcomplicate it. The extra money at the end of the month, that's the guilty free money that brings you happiness, which he describes in his book. So if saving more money makes you happy, go ahead, contribute more to your 401k, or your savings account. But that guilty free money is what gives you enjoyment, which for me is technology. For others, it might be cars, drinking, eating out, traveling, collecting niche products, pretty much whatever brings you joy. I think the first thing that kind of made me take a step back was when I had to purchase my first car two years ago, which I can say for another video if you guys are interested in it. But there's this whole notion of only buying a car in cash, used and drive it into the ground which makes perfect sense if you want to maximize the value of your money. If you can't buy it in cash, you can't afford it. Perfectly fine philosophy. But it's not the only philosophy. What about maximizing your well-being or whatever's in your checkbox? So for me, safety features were a top priority. If it didn't have the safety features I was looking for, 
I wasn't interested in it. Now, technically I could buy a car in cash, drive it to the ground, but if I felt miserable driving that car until it literally stopped working or I just had to keep throwing money at it in order to keep it running just so I don't have to pay a car note, I would hate my life, honestly. Now, I didn't buy anything extravagant or to look cool, even though my parents really wanted me to buy a BMW or a Mercedes or an Audi. Anyway, the car I got, I enjoy it. It was well within my means. It gives me flexibility to do other things so I didn't drop all the money down on it. Um, I didn't put 20% down. It's not like I have to pay PMI for putting less than 20% down. It's a car loan, not a mortgage, but my loan payment is nowhere near the average of around $600. It's actually like less than that. It's like almost half than that. Um, the interest rate is below 3% and it's getting paid off in less than 48 months, which is still in line with the car mine golden rule 2410 minus the 20 part. But the problem I have with fire, especially when asking for help, is disregarding others' philosophies and other people's viewpoints and enjoyment in life just for the sake of saving money. I think your well-being and experiences in life are worth way more than anything money can buy or save. And I would also caution people who ask for financial help from people who are strong-willed at fire. I would say get a person who is good at playing devil's advocate, which I think is my expertise. I love playing devil's advocate honestly just pisses people off but that way you just get multiple perspectives which is what you should not only do in finances but in general life as well you should always try and get as many perspectives as possible why am i slowing down on fire wouldn't i like to retire at 35 yes who wouldn't but am i going to sacrifice my 20s and 30s and limit my experiences in youth that i have to sacrifice in order to achieve fire. Currently the pandemic is doing a pretty good job of limiting my experiences, so there's that. But seriously guys, I'm good with 45. I'm good with 55. Might as well make him 100 years old. I'll retire then. Now, I don't hate fire, but I do think when you first get involved, you may take it to the extreme, or maybe that's just me. But fire's taught me a lot of things about personal finance, and my friends and family ask me a ton of questions, and even, through my own humility, I still think I have a lot to learn because I just don't know everything there is about finances. I'm still learning to this day. If there's a golden nugget or like a huge takeaway that you can get from watching this video, this is probably the most important part. And this is just my perspective on how I view money. And money is just a tool that can be exchanged for things that bring you value in life. What's valuable to me may not be valuable to you. And as long as you know where your money is going and you're okay with it, there's nothing to be stressed about. But if you know where your money is going and you're not okay with how you spend it, you should take the appropriate measures in order to get where you want to be. The goal for anyone should just to become more financially literate and learn the ways of leveraging money, credit, and debt instead of just completely shying away from it because knowledge is power. Okay, that was actually kind of clean. You should automate your savings and investing and enjoy the life you have. We're all floating on this rock in space, so might as well make the most of it while we're here. So for those of you who are committed to fire, I salute you. Good luck on your journey. I'm hopping off the train. I'm hopping on the train that's going a little bit slower, but I appreciate every sub, like, and comment. And if you were part of the fire community or still a part of it, let me know your experience. Maybe it's the same or different. I'm interested. And as always, guys, much love.